Today on the Guitar Reliquary, it's a Stratastrophe. We are going to be looking at the Sweetwater exclusive Seafoam Player Series Stratocaster with the roasted maple neck and fretboard. This guitar is heavily modified because I uh, wanted the ultimate Strat. I've owned many different Strats in my lifetime. U.S. Custom Shop, uh, made in Mexico, some Squires. And to me, if you can find the right Mexican-made Stratocaster with the specs you want, it's the perfect platform to put some money into to make a guitar that you will hold on to for a long time. Now, my Stratocaster started off uh, as that Sweetwater exclusive model with a roasted maple neck. Uh, I believe it has the standard alder body that you find on most Stratocasters. Uh, if I look at it, I can see some seams that believe, lead me to believe that it's probably a four-piece body uh, as opposed to a two-piece or three-piece body, which is what some folks prefer. Uh, the neck appears to be a two-piece neck. Uh, it has a seam going right down the center of the neck here uh, with the either rosewood or pow ferro uh, insert for where they glue in the truss rod. So let's talk about uh, why I bought this guitar. I bought this guitar because of all the amazing Stratocaster players out there that uh, I have grown up with and have enjoyed listening to. Um, you know, Jeff Beck, rest in peace. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, also rest in peace. Um, Eric Johnson, uh, some of the heavier guys like Uli John Roth from the 70s era Scorpions, uh, Iron Maiden, Dave Murray in particular is one of my favorite guitar players, and there's a, a whole host more. David Gilmore, um, you know, you could spend all day naming Stratocaster players. And I went for the, the Seafoam Green because I really like the, the color, and it's, um, if you're going to have a, a Stratocaster, you should have one of those. 50s style paint jobs, you know, Fiesta Red or Seafoam Green were the two I was looking at. And of course, the Roasted Maple Neck won. So, in addition to the Alder Body and the Roasted Maple Neck, it has medium jumbo frets with a 9.5 inch radius, so the more modern radius. And uh, I kept the Player Series bridge on it. I did not change the bridge. You can tell I did change the saddles, but I kept the two-point trim. I prefer the two-point trim to the five-point trim, excuse me, six-point trim with the six screws. Uh, I find that usually it's resting on one or two screws and it's wearing out the other ones. So before Sweetwater sent this to me, I paid for them to pleck it so that it would have perfect fretwork. Uh, my experience with Fender is that their fretwork out of the factory uh, is not up to my standards, and I either have to level the frets myself, or in the case of Sweetwater, I wanted the lowest action as possible, so I had them pleck it. They did a very nice job with the pleck. They polished the frets, and they look great. I also had them install a bone nut, so these usually come with the plastic nut. I prefer um, either bone or graph tech, something that is not going to bind as much, uh, at the at the nut. So they sent this to me with the you know original stats. The only thing they did was swap the nut. After I got it, I made substantial changes to it. I swapped the bent steel saddles, which I don't like, to the block style, and I thought it would be cool to go with the cream graph tech or white graph tech saddles just for aesthetic reasons. I was not concerned about breaking strings, but I do like the white on the, the guitar. It looks nice with the seafoam. I also put a Graph Tech string reta retainer, string tree, on it because, again, I wanted the aesthetics. I like the white on the headstock. 
I replaced the original fender tuners with some fender locking tuners with the smaller uh, kidney bean uh, tuning buttons, which I prefer. And then the major thing that I did was I swapped out the pickups and the pick guards. So I bought a pre-wired pick guard from the Stratosphere. I can't recommend them enough. They're a great company uh, based in New Hampshire. And that pre-wired pick guard had custom shop 69 uh, pickups and I was really intrigued by the custom shop 69s uh, because I've played the the fifth fat 50s I've played the 63s I've played all the variations of the noiseless and the American made pickups and I never found a set that I really liked um, the set of single coils I liked the most were in the Seymour Duncan quarter pound flats in the Richie Blackmore Stratocaster but I said I was going to give it a try and go with the, the 69 because they were supposed to be, uh, you know, like a rock pickup, uh, very Hendrixian. I'm not a huge Hendrix fan, but I thought that, you know, he has a good strat tone. That would be a good thing to do. So I swapped that in. Uh, and while I was at it, um, I also put on uh, a mint green back plate to match the mint green pit guard that I wanted here. And then of course, because I'm an Iron Maiden fan, I had to put the Eddie neck plate on it that I bought on Reverb. So this has the standard five position switch. You have your bridge, you have position two, which is your bridge and your middle. You have position three, which is just the middle, position four, which is the neck in the middle, and then position five, which is just the neck. And then this has the wiring mod so that this controls the tone for the bridge. Uh, as some Stratocaster wiring does not have a bridge tone, this one does. Which is cool because you sometimes like to, to mess with uh, rolling the tone off. And then this is uh, the only Strat I've ever set to floating. So I don't know if you can see, but I do have it floating on the body so I can use the trim. Uh, it stays in tune incredibly well. I have, um, let's see, Ernie Ball Paradigm, uh, what are they called, hybrid slinkies, the 9 to 46, the Van Halen gauge on these, and uh, for some reason it just works on this. I usually use a much heavier string. I use 11s on a lot of my uh, guitars, or, or 10 to 52s, um, you know, Dave Mustaine style. But for this, I just decided to keep it with the 9s uh, to 46s. I needed the 46. Uh, they come with a 42. Um, it's just a 42 is too small for me when I'm playing rock and I'm really going to town on it. And then the action on this is like stupid low. I think I've got it at, you know, two thirty seconds of an inch on the bass side at the 12th fret. And then I have it at three uh, sorry, three sixty fourths of an inch on the treble side, I have no fret out. So when you hear the demo that's coming up in a second, you'll see there's no fret out. And uh, that was really important for me because I hate playing a Stratocaster and having fret out. So my verdict is if you're considering a Sweetwater uh, player series Stratocaster with the roasted maple neck, uh, definitely do it. Uh, but if I would use it as a platform to create your own special instrument that you want to use for uh, the rest of your life. Uh, for example, this is the only Strat that I've held on to for more than a few months. I, I, I love it. I've played it a lot. Um, fortunately, I haven't started wearing the frets yet, uh, but once I do, I will probably have it refretted with stainless steel frets. So pop a comment. Below, let me know what you think of the guitar and the modifications and what you think of the tones that I get out of it.
right, so this was the Sweetwater exclusive Seafoam Green Player Series Stratocaster. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.